Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to look at neck cranks versus chokes. Are neck cranks cheap? Should you be using them? How can you ensure that you're landing a choke instead of a crank? Stick around to find out more. Yeah, that was more of a neck crank than a choke. When applying some chokes, sometimes the pressure that is applied ends up being more of a neck crank than an actual choke. Make sure you stick around until later in the video when I will show you how to properly apply a couple of chokes that commonly become neck cranks and how to defend against them. With a choke, you will feel pressure, then you will feel sleepy, then you will lose consciousness if your partner continues to apply pressure. With the neck crank, you will feel pressure, then pain. If they continue to apply pressure, it is highly unlikely that they will break your neck as that would take a tremendous amount of pressure. However, it is entirely possible to cause herniated discs or other injuries which could have long-term consequences. Now, does it matter if you're applying a choke and it ends up being more of a crank? Well, in training you want to make that choke as clean as possible, meaning it is all choke and no crank. If your choke is 100% clean, it should take A, very little effort on your part, and B, if your opponent doesn't tap, they won't feel pain, but they'll fall asleep. Regardless of how big and tough your opponent is, if the blood flow to the brain is disrupted, they will lose consciousness. If you have more of a neck crank, it's not only gonna take more energy to finish because you're gonna to have to squeeze harder, but your opponent will be tapping from the pain it causes, not because they were about to lose consciousness. Now, the problem with this is, you run into some really tough guys who are like, I can take the pain. And they won't tap because they aren't worried about passing out or anything breaking. However, over time, getting your neck continually cranked can cause muscle strains, ligament damage, herniated discs, and in rare causes, damage to the spinal cord itself, which is extremely dangerous. All of these things can easily lead to stiffness in the neck or worse. I like my training partners, and I want them to train tomorrow and the next day. I don't want them walking around going, every time someone calls their name for the next week. If you're in a tournament, under most rule sets, you cannot apply a neck crank unless it is part of a choke. Reading between the lines, this means you should not be applying neck cranks, but trying for the choke. However, often when people feel they're getting close to a submission, they start squeezing harder and that choke does end up being a crank. Now, if you are in a tournament and you think you can finish this way, go for it. The referee is not gonna stop the match because it may be a crank. The best answer I've heard for this is, if it looks like a choke, it's a choke. However, when you're training, the idea is to get better at each technique, so it's best to take the time to examine things and figure out how to make that choke clean and easier to perform. If you'd like to continue getting better, check out my playlist here for more tips on how to improve your game. Also, let's not forget that the martial arts were intended to be for self-defense. So if someone attacks you on the street, Crank, choke, whatever works. Although as I previously stated, you'd be best trying to hit the choke cleanly rather than getting the crank. It takes less effort if your assailant continues to fight the technique, they will pass out. So when training with your partners, here are a few things to keep in mind. Whenever possible, try to make it a choke. Your goal while you're training anytime is to get better, to be able to do the techniques with as little effort as possible and having the best results. Or as Jigoro Kano put it, maximum efficiency with minimal effort. Let's take a look at two chokes that are commonly turned into cranks because the person doing them doesn't have the right angles. The side choke and the north-south choke. Here we see Steven setting up the side choke. His arm goes underneath Jonah's head with his palm facing down. This will ensure that his forearm is under Jonah's neck. He then pushes Jonah's head with his free hand to force Jonah's neck against Steven's bicep. What stops this from being a choke most times is having your chest on your opponent's shoulder. So Steven slides his chest off of Jonah's shoulder and down to the floor, pushing Jonah's shoulder into his own neck instead of to the floor. Finishing the choke is a simple matter of flexing the bicep of the constricting arm. Here you see Steven can finish the choke with only one arm if everything is lined up properly. I am not suggesting you try and do the choke this way when you are rolling or fighting. However, I do suggest practicing the technique like this as it will give you a great feel for the choke and make sure you are catching it cleanly. Steven is setting up the north-south choke. 
He uses his ribs to roll Jonah's chin up, then drops down beside Jonah's head, sliding his arm under as deep as possible, again with his palm facing down to ensure the arm is under Jonah's neck and not his head. Similar to the side choke, Stephen takes his chest off of Jonah's shoulder and slides it down to the floor, creating a tight seal around Jonah's neck, just like with the previous choke. Stephen finishes by simply flexing his bicep. Also like the side choke, you can practice with just one arm to make sure you have the technique cleanly. By applying them properly, you'll see that they take very little effort and that we'll be achieving a clean choke. When training with your partner, it's important to let them know if they've got the technique applied properly. Your job as a partner is to help your teammates get better. You'll always improve most when training with better practitioners. So if the people you're training with are better, this will also help you get better. So how do you let your partner know when they have a crank rather than a choke? Coming up afterwards and rubbing your neck and saying something like, oh, that was more of a crank than a choke, dude, implies you didn't really beat me. I only tap because you used an illegal technique. This not only diminishes the other person's efforts, but also makes you look like an excuse maker and not a good future training partner. After all, you did tap, and that's the whole purpose of the technique. For sure, you should absolutely tap to this when it does happen because you don't want to be walking around with a sore neck and possibly being unable to train for the next week or so. There's no need to try and be a hero and say you didn't tap to that neck crank. Again, the idea is for you and your training partners to get better. Help them to learn to do the techniques with maximum efficiency with minimal effort. If you get caught here and you know what the person is doing wrong, tap first, acknowledge that it was a good setup. They did get you in that position after all. Then show them the details they're missing to make sure they get a clean choke. If you can't quite figure out what's missing, ask your professor, instructor, or coach to help show them how to correct the technique. If you are the person applying the technique, try to make sure that you are getting that clean choke. As I stated earlier, if the choke is clean, it should require very little effort. In fact, once you have gained enough experience, you'll know when the choke is on by the way it feels. Until you get to that point, apply a little pressure. If it's not forcing your opponent to tap, stop and ask them. Was that close? Was it more crank or choke? You want to get to the point when you know through feel if you have a choke or a crank on. Ask your partner what you need to adjust to make the choke. Remember that the point of rolling is to get better, not to win every roll. By stopping and finding ways to adjust your game, you'll eventually find what works best. Okay, so you're working at getting better and finding how to apply a choke properly. But what happens when you're caught in a crank? As I said before, tap if you're feeling pain in your neck. But let's take a look at how to avoid being in that situation where you're exposed like this. If you have good training partners, they'll respect you and wish to keep you safe. It'll most likely be a different story if you're in a tournament, MMA match, or a street fight. Here Steven starts to set up the side choke by bringing his arm around my head. I bring my arm inside of his arm and over my head, stopping him from controlling my head. I then shrimp onto my side, using my elbow to push his arm over my head. Steven starts to set up the side choke. I swing my feet away from him and then bring them straight across into the other side, creating a lot of force and shrimping away at the end. In both of these scenarios, you want to avoid the position if possible. The earlier you can escape, the easier it will be. If you allow your opponent to anchor in and solidify the position, your job has just gotten that much harder. So there you have it. Neck cranks versus chokes. Which is better? How to execute the chokes properly and how to defend against them. If you enjoyed the video, please smash that subscribe button below. Turn on your notifications for new content. Like, share, and leave a comment. I'll see you all in the next video.